Oh, have you been here before? No, that's why you're sat there, isn't it? So, uh, <laughs> nice to have you here. Hello there, this lady here, what's your name? Lola. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> puppy for the evening. Excellent. So, uh, so nice to have you, Lola. What do you do, Lola? You're a student. What are you studying, Lola? French and culture studies. Fuck me, they're diametrically opposed. And, um... <laughs> it's fine, just looking up diametrically. will be a while. Anyway, and, um... No, I'm only missing around. Nice to have you here, then, Lola. And uh, when you say French and, and, and culture studies, that's a degree, is it? It sounds like just two A-levels, really, to be honest with you. But... It's a what, sorry? It's a joint degree. Oh, well, does that mean you get like a, a kind of a 2-1-2-1 two one, two one at the end of it or something like that? Which just sounds like a kind of a, a someone doing a sound check backwards, doesn't it? Anyway, and, uh, well, fuck it, come on, guys, speed up. Anyway, and, uh, it's a nice to have you here then, Lola. Where are you from? I don't want to know, but I probably do now. Uh, where are you from? You are from France, and you're doing a degree in French? Crazy bitch! <laughs> Translation degree? Well, so far your English is quite good. I've got a feeling you'll probably breeze it. Uh, I mean, oh my god, so you're doing a degree in French? Oh and you got a grant for that, did you? Fuck me. That's uh, astonishing, really, isn't it? Anyway, well, well, well done you, because that sounds like a dos and a half. Uh, and you're doing that in Sussex? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, well done. And, uh, and, when, and, and you're from France originally then? Born in London, but brought up in France. Okay, cool. And then, but, but, but over here studying and stuff. And I, I, you don't like France. But well, okay, you don't like France, but you're doing a degree in French. Um, you're a bit weird. Okay. Um, well, nice to have you here, then Lola. Anyway, as well. And uh, on your right, hello. What's your name? Heidi. Lola and Heidi. Fuck me, ragged. This is like some posh porn, isn't it? And, um, well, nice to have you here, Heidi. You're a student as well. I'm kind of guessing. And what do you study, Heidi? Biology, there you go, that's a it's, it's a real subject. Thanks for pointing that out, Lola. I would have said it myself, but fuck it, I've got a microphone, there'll be more effects. Um, <laughs> so nice to have you here then, Heidi, studying biology. And where are you from, Heidi, originally? Um, Essex. Essex, it's alright, you don't have to give a clue, she will know this. Um, from Essex, that's alright, you can be from Essex. Someone going, ah, oh, down here, they seem to have mistaken this for a panto. Never mind. Um, don't mistake it for a panto, someone shout out, he's behind you. And seeing as we close the Kent Town, I might shit myself. So, uh, I won't shit myself. I'd like that. So, um. So, nice. Well, okay. And from S6, doing biology, which again is a bit of a dos, really, isn't it? Because, fuck me, you're all naked by the age of 12. So, um. No, fair enough. Okay. And uh, we'll call down here. And then, very quick hello to the other two girls on this table, because you're giggling a lot, which is cool for comedy. It's slightly arousing, seeing as you're about 10 years younger than me, but never mind. And, um, you are. Sarah. See, the names are getting normal now. That's cool. And what degree are you doing, Sarah? History. Now you see, now look, dos, dos, tough fucking degree, isn't it? Because every year the syllabus gets slightly longer, doesn't it? Now, uh, it's a fucking nightmare, isn't it? Right? Hundreds of years ago, history, piece of piss. Nothing's happened, right? Okay, right? Now, loads of wars keep happening. In fact, you finish your final year, you go in, you do the exam, you come out, phew, finally finish the degree, then oh, more shit happened. Back you go, Sarah. Learn. And by the time you do actually graduate, your knowledge out of date. What a fucking nightmare. Um, so cool doing a history, and then finally this lady here, uh, what's your name? Sarah, two Sarahs, oh fantastic. And uh, what do you study Sarah? Two. Psychology. You see now, see that's quite good, because I'm not going to take the piss there, am I? Because I'm worried I get a psychologist heckle. I'll be going, yeah, you're a bit shit, yeah, your mum never loved you. Fuck! <laughs> I'm not sure I can deal with that. Uh, it's nice to have you. And where are you from originally, Sarah? London, which bit of London? South East, just give us a compass point, fuck it, there we go, make uh, stalking you that bit more tricky. So, um, could you say this bit of London? I'm sure we've heard of it. This is Brighton, not fucking Cornwall. Um, which bit? Greenwich, yeah, we, we might have heard that, fuck it, anyone, anyone who's had to change their clock back in the autumn may have stumbled across the turn. Uh, who listens to the radio normally. I'm one of the, I'm a big radio listener. I was listening on the way up, actually. You may have heard this, uh, Disney Corporation. You know, they brought out that feature-length film, Mr. Magoo, all those years ago, but they've just announced they're going to do a sequel. And the American National Institute for the Blind have complained, saying it's stereotypical and derogatory to blind people, to which the Disney Corporation responded, and this is the absolute truth, that they shouldn't complain until they've seen the film. Which, uh, <laughs> fucking genius. Of years ago, 
of years ago. When the, do you remember when the new Pope came in as well? And they was the Americans were trying to get this sort of absolution because there was a big sort of hoo-ha of what was going over there with the kind of big sort of the, the reckon there was perverts in the Catholic Church. I don't know who fucking guessed. And um, and the the new Pope started his kind of uh, you know papacy by saying you know there was no place in the Roman Catholic Church for people who abuse children, because all those places have gone. <laughs> Thanks for application, no more vacancies. Uh... <laughs> Now, so like I said, I was listening to the radio uh, on the way here, and um, it, quite weird, really, because uh, at home I've got a digital radio, and I'm beginning to feel like that's the norm now, having all those. So when I get into my car, it's a little bit weird. And I've got, you know, people, again, this is another Christmas present. Some of you guys will get digital radios now, because you can get them for like 25 quid. When I bought one, and this was only like four years ago, it was 220 pounds, right, for a digital radio, right? And I went in, I saw it, and I, it kind of fitted in with my stacking system, so I wanted that one, because it like, looked quite cool. And, and, and I asked for the price, it's 220. You know? you know when you try and pretend to not be affected by what the price of something is? <laughs> you clearly are. Yeah, and you just go, oh. <laughs> what you did was go, oh. Stephen, right? You know, it's the technology you're buying into. This thing is future-proof, which frightens me already when you said that, right? You know, right, right now, yeah, it'll show you a screen telling you the name of the station and the name of the song that's playing. I mean, you know, it's quite good, but you kind of get that now. He's, yeah, yeah, but in five years' time, it'll be colour. In ten years' time, it'll be pictures. And in twenty years' time, it'll be moving. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a fucking telly. I mean, I've kind of got one of those already. So I bought it. Uh, so welcome back, let's just check you guys are still in good voice. Uh, as it is Valentine's Day, let's have a big cheer for everyone who managed to have uh, sex last night. Okay, about six of you. Um, there's uh, someone clapping. How middle class is that? Yes, we had sex and dinner. Uh, what an evening. Uh, so, so, I, so I, I know you guys can't hear it because a few of you are just still, still coming, just still settling down, but I swear I heard someone over there go, you fucking better not have. Um, <laughs> all right, so people don't feel left out. Let's have a big cheer for everyone. Looking forward to getting laid tonight. <laughs> There's Matt there just capping her thigh. You know the drill. Um, <laughs> It's February the 14th. It's all about the romance. But it's on the outfit. Um, oh, and to see if you're like, to see if that's a little bit too honest, wasn't it? Uh, let's see. And to see if you're my kind of crowd. You certainly seem like my kind of crowd. Can we have a big cheer, please, from all the women who hate oral sex? My kind of crowd! <laughs> there, there are so many couples right now with the folks going, <laughs> you fucking liar! <laughs> So I'm not giving or receiving. I'm a bloke. <laughs> um, actually, that's a genuine question, isn't it? Sorry. I just I love this one well, because you're all silent as well. There are people right now sort of thinking, she didn't shout out, there's my passport for sucky fun. Um, by the way, he's in Indonesia, just down the road. So anyway, um <laughs> so when you say about giving or receiving, it's bizarre because I have been heckled by that before, and it's a fair point, actually. If you're gonna be quite pedantic, where's the gentleman who shouted out? Where are you, sir? Where are you? Oh fuck it, not so brave now, are you? Uh, I'll shout out and get involved in the show. Oh fuck, it's not the telly. He can see me too. Um, where are you? Where are you? I'm not going to give you a hard time. I think it's a better question. Where are you? Right at the back. Hi, what's your name? Hamish. Hamish? <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming that's your partner. On the basis of how far away she sat, that's an indication about how well you're going to write. Um, shall I sleep downstairs? Yes, in another fucking house. Um, <laughs> is, it, is it Hamish? Yes. Right, okay, then lots of people answering for you, Hamish. So that's the only pitch in when you think this is going to be fucking hilarious. Um, uh, the other 29 days of the month you'll find in Manila, I am the Oscar Wilde of Manila. Watch as I chip in with this giving or receiving. Oh, yes. Carry her out on a bath chair. Um, well, look, you know what? It's a fair point, mate. And I, 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 you know, I, to be fair, I, I've had that heckle before. I had a woman shout before giving or receiving, and I said giving. And she went, ugh! I said, what do you mean, her? She went, ugh! I said, look, you have to expand on her. She went, it's disgusting! I said, what do you mean, it's disgusting? She went, you men, you don't wash. <laughs> and I said, well, what do you think you're doing? As far as I'm concerned, you're killing two birds with one stone. I mean, that's a... Uh... <laughs> End of the process, nice, clean, 
cock and up the empty sack. I mean, it's practically multitasking, isn't it? Magic. Somewhat. But nonetheless, even though I'm laughing, I do love you. <laughs> this is fun. I'm having fun now. How you doing? You got that? You good? You good? I'm not giving you up. You got an American friend with you as well, I can tell them. Hello, how are you doing, sir? I wasn't sure if this rather half was sat a row back. You're tiny. Hello. You're right. Fucking hell. My God, when you go back to America with him, do you go back as hand luggage? Oh, yeah. Originally military, is that right, Tim? <laughs> a little bit of it. What's a little bit of military? I shot someone, but only for fun. Uh, Stroke. You look serious. Um, no, bless you, sir. Is that is that why you first came to the Philippines? Yeah. Excellent stuff, and it's good. And how long have you been here for now, sir? Five years. Are you enjoying it? For every day. Okay, I can see why. And. Um, it's, uh, it's, cool, it's cool to have you here. I, I, I don't want to do any more yak bashing, trust me, I get into trouble for it sometimes. I, I got heckled in, in London by an American, and obviously you guys, you travel the world, you're kind of a little bit more worldly wise than your average American. I have to say you get a different sort of American in London, because they're the ones who think that London is England, and England is Britain, which are no upsets to Scots, which would make the M25 the coast. And, um, and, and basically this guy, right? I, I, you know, he'd been the, to the comedy club the week before. It's a place called the Comedy Store, right? He'd had the shit ripped out of him. Imagine that. Imagine. And, um, <laughs> yeah, who would have guessed? And he was so upset. He was so upset. He actually went off and prepared some heckles for the following week. Now, I didn't know about this guy, but I was the first act on stage. I got on stage. I saw him in the audience. I thought, is he American? Check shirt, two cameras, have a guess. Um, <laughs> And before I could even finish my first sentence, the guy stood up, pointed me at Hey! If it weren't for us, you would all be speaking German! <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if it weren't for us, you'd all be speaking Apache Indian. <laughs> explain it to him. Um, <laughs> I'm a <laughs> uh, this is cool. And um, this is the problem with Edinburgh. It's, uh, for example, we spent, because comics, we, we, we spent 11 months gearing up to it, and then when it comes, it's the be-all and end-all. We forget the fact the rest of the world doesn't really care. I mean, I got reviews that I spent more time reading than my fucking script to rehearse. I got one review saying, Stephen Grant, very funny bloke, but suffers a bit too much from pedanticness. And that really pissed me Because <laughs> if I wrote to them and told them it's pedantry, it would prove them fucking right. <laughs> Well, as well, yes, Stephen Grant, quite meticulous guy behind his research, sort of bloke who would always dot the I's and cross the T's. I remember thinking, who doesn't <laughs> dot the I's and cross the T's? Who here of the students in your normal writing, non-typing day will go, oh, too much effort, I'll come back later? I mean, how much work is it even someone suffering studying fine art would be okay with going, hmm? <laughs> not much work, and do you know what? It's not apathy. It's not apathy. It's incompetence. Because if you don't dot an I, it's no longer a fucking I. It's a little L. And if you don't cross a T, what's that become? Yes, another fucking L. What you'll end up with is a shitload of L's. Now, I'll tell you who isn't dotting the I's and crossing the T's. The Welsh! <laughs> Trust me, I am on your level here. Any fellow pedants, 
Come on, there's got to be people in here suffering, studying engineering who just sit there looking at scripts going, that's wrong. Um, no, no fellow pedants at all. All right, then, is anyone sat next to someone right now who in an argument is impossible to beat because I just keep picking out what you said about three years ago? <laughs> right, okay, that was a little bit too heavy a laugh there, sir. Is, uh, who are you picking out? Sorry. Oh my god, I've just looked at you, right? I just didn't realise this table. It's like kind of three girls and you sat there as if to say, oh yes, I may look like I'm in a band, but at the same time, I'm surrounded by pussy. So, uh, what's your name, sir? Alistair. Alistair. It would be Ali as well, but fuck it, your parents won't be giving you money. Keep it like that. And, um, like, I don't know about you, Alistair, what sort of music are you into? Uh, and, uh, Indie rocky stuff, it's kind of similar thing to what I used to be into, right? And do you know what, right? I used to really like it, but then I started overanalyzing the lyrics. And then the songs were fucking ruined. So now I can only listen to classical and techno. That's right. I want to take trunks and loafers, not a good fucking combination, right? Yeah, and so uh, uh, look, I'll give you an example. A basic song. Let's take, for example, The Righteous Brothers, You've Lost That Loving Feeling. That's a beautiful song, right? It's been number one twice in the UK charts and is wrecked for me by the opening line, which goes. And I quote, You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. That's his complaint. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. Well, fair enough, but the only way you'd know that is if you had your eyes open. So you're as bad as she is. You never close your eyes anymore it implies that when she was previously closing her eyes, you still had your fucking eyes open. So you lost the loving feeling years before she did. <laughs> so two years together in a cross-Atlantic relationship, Suzanne, Asa, and Tessa. I'm impressed, I'm impressed. And have uh, and, and you been over to the UK, Suzanne? And have you met his family? Oh God, there was a little breathing of air then as if to say they're not pleased. Um, is, it, is it a bit fraught? They're great, yes, they're great. Uh, you're the politician, well done. I, you know, the reason why I say that as well is because I, find, I think it's hard in America, because we're really, you know, I know this is a majority British uh, room right now, it's comedy, obviously. <laughs> sense to any other English speaking nation. And the other thing is, we're quite patronising we don't realise, Suzanne, we don't realise we don't realise you guys have slang too, we don't think about this, because when you guys say piss, for example, you mean angry, don't you? Whereas we mean drunk. Yeah. And uh, when you say wrecked, you mean destroyed, whereas we mean drunk. Uh, yeah. When you say wasted, you mean murdered, whereas we mean drunk. It's pretty much drunk for everything in British slang. And murdered, not covered in yoghurt. I'm going to say a few more hello, hello sir, are you right down here? And then you sat there as if to say, I hope he doesn't fucking notice me. Uh, I will, this bit's not the telly, I can see you too. So, um, so hello, what's your name? Steve, another Steve, excellent, you a B or a PH? A PH, good, B strike capris, that's what I find. And, uh, what do you do, Steve? You're a lawyer, are you? Fucking hell, okay. Uh, Back to the possible job interview, I think. Um, how long have you been a lawyer for? 22 years. Might as well round it up to 30. Fuck it. And uh, <laughs> been on the phone for three minutes now. Fuck it. Invoice. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> what sort of law do you specialise in? Corporate law. Right, okay. This again explains the massive aesthetic shortfall between you and your beautiful partner. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should come home with me. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> where are you from originally, sir? You're from New Zealand, are you? Fucking hell, that's, I, I've never been to New Zealand. Is it nice? Fact, I saw that uh, tourist information film, what do you call it? Lord of the Rings. It looks like. Uh, I'm not sure about the little boats with knives, it's not that quite picturesque. I do you see all the Kiwis moaning, we should have won it, we should have won it, we should have won it. Oh, I spent all this money coming to France, I spent all this money. Yeah, four days later, with their World Cup final tickets they pre-bought, 5,000 euros, 5,000 euros. I could buy a farm back at home with this. Um, 
I, 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 I get on well, I get on well with Kiwis and Aussies. I think it's beautiful. I think the beauty of this language is that it allows us to actually do this job all the way around the world. I love this job. It's fantastic. We get the opportunity to talk to all sorts of different people. And then when I come to Hong Kong, I say, oh, great, Hong Kong, uh, tech stuff. I can go and uh, buy a few bits of my work to the one try computer centre today, and that was quite good. Well, sort of good. I wanted to turn around at one point, but there's no opportunity. And uh, <laughs> apparently I brought shoulders. We must think. And, um, but, you know, it was, it was busy there as well. The worst thing was, the stuff I wanted to buy was stuff I'd never get in my suitcase. So there was a, first of all, I basically I've blown up my telly. I mean, so I talked about televisions earlier, and I was thinking you may actually sell TVs right there. I was a little bit worried, Donovan, because I was thinking I actually want a widescreen TV. I blew up my normal one, and I've gone back to a normal telly. Has anyone had to do that at all? It's a horrible situation, right? Yeah, because it's a real step back, isn't it? The normal telly was fine for years. Then you get widescreen, you can't. It's like if you've got HD now, you go, oh, look at this. You can see it from the end of the room. Like, oh, just move the sofa closer, same value. And, um, you know, and, and, and what happens is I've got cable back home. I don't know where it's like. It was satellite, they resize it with cable. They expect you to have a widescreen TV, and they cut the picture off of the side to some kind of punishment for being too poor. I don't know if you know this. I'm sat watching a film, I can hear voices, but I can't see faces. <laughs> Ghosts, game shows, they're even tough. Are you trying making a conundrum out of seven letters? I mean, that's it. <laughs> Lovely difficult. That's when I'm watching a countdown, or Antdow as it appears on my screen. And what else do I get? Yeah, Ascender, um, Oronation Street, um, mm, a celebrity, get me out of her. That is. <laughs> appears to be as good as I hoped. Um, but there was a program on the Discovery Travel Channel there called Canal Adventures. Now, let us not pop either side. Well, I respect you quite a lot, actually, to be honest with you. I mean, there was Pat there, it's not the kind I was expecting. <laughs> I'm from Brighton, in the south coast of England, and hey. no I'm not, but a lot of my friends are, and... <laughs> Good, okay, but those of you out of Denmark, like Suzanne, you're a little bit puzzled there, I'm sure possibly yourself as well, Michelle, you may not know, do you know about the... You do, that's the beauty, isn't it? I mean, a, 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 a Mexican with an American accent sat in Hong Kong right now in front of a British comic knows full well that my hometown of a quarter million people is full of gays. Thank you so much for that international reference. What, sorry? Rocky beaches? No, actually what they are are proper beaches, you see. Uh, you go down to your little beaches down here, like in New Zealand, or so in California, you lie on the beach, you give it a sand up your arse, and pick it out quite straightforward. Get a bit of Brighton sand up your arse, you will go to casualty. You see, uh, the grains are that little bit bigger. We like to weed out the people who won't make an effort. <laughs> True, that's the way we do it. Actually, no, if you ever get a chance to go to Brighton, my hometown, on the short walk from the station down to the seafront, they still sell those plastic bucket and spades for making sand parcels. I mean, what utter bastards? Am I okay? You're getting down on the beach, one grain of sand, two grains of sand, uh, 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 and all broken. I mean, the only castle you can make on Brighton Beach is an actual fucking castle with a moat and a drawer. <laughs> Yes, it, it, it's, it's a gay capital of Europe now. We've uh, managed to achieve that. It's one in five men between the ages of 20 to 25. And I don't mind that fact, clearly. You know, I think it's quite cool. It makes it quite cosmopolitan. And uh, I mean, a little tip, if you've never been before, though, uh, don't go into a newsagent's on the seafront, right? So I don't anymore, not since the last time when I went in and asked for a good TV guide. And the guy slipped on the cocktail dress, took me up and down the pier. So, uh, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> That's a real say, very persistent guy, because he said, Stephen, he's an said, inside you, he's a gay man, desperate to get out. I went, um, no. <laughs> Outside me is a gay man, desperate to get in. <laughs> prior to this, and I normally find a few IT people sat around the front as well, that was, where's my nearest IT people, they probably won't respond, they're not used to, no, you over there, so I was at UA Circle with that name, who would have fucking guessed? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you go to the gym or you just upgrade? And, uh, what's happened to your ass? It's a USB slot, I've had an upgrade. Uh, <laughs> Financial software, wow, this must be the most fun you've ever had. Is there? <laughs> That's why I don't want to take the 
be so much. I don't work in IT. I was a year 2000 consultant. That was the last job I did before. The work kind of dried up eight years ago. But up until then, uh, very busy. And um, I wish it was a joke. It's true. I did a year 2000 consultancy, January the first 2000. Ooh, diary's looking a bit empty. Started doing my hobby full time, which is why I'm doing this now. And it's funny because I, you know what? I'm going to have sympathy for you, Ace, because I know full well that when you work in computers, your friend know, friends know that you work in computers. And every time something goes wrong with their laptop or their desktop, they'll ring you up. Well, mate, and yes, Suzanne's nodding and saying, oh yeah, there we were, about to have a romantic evening. No, this is how you get your documents back. Isn't it? Uh, that's what happens if you work. You know, I think it'll phone you up. Like I can phone that. Can you help me get a virus off my computer? And you know what? Three or four years ago, I could. Because it was easy to spot a virus, wasn't it? Especially, it must be tough for you guys here. Because, you know, back in Britain, if I had an email from a .hk directory, you know, um, internet domain, I thought, well, I don't know anyone in Hong Kong that's going to be... A virus, isn't it? You know, it was normally click here. Yeah, see, fireworks, exciting. <laughs> right, okay, whereas now, there's so much clever on there, because the email comes in from an address you think you know. Yes, my mate really fancies you. Here's her picture. You think, ooh, it's got to be worth a go. Um, <laughs> and, you the, and you get the virus, right? And in the old days, a virus would right, bring up like a skull and crossbones, wouldn't it, Ace? Play a few notes of music and make you feel a bit of an idiot. But now it hides in the background, steals your bank details, sends a copy of that virus to everyone in your address book from you. Why right now, now my address book is made up of 20 years of people I've ever spoke to. There's people in there I don't speak to anymore. There's people in there I don't want to speak to anymore. I've got ex-girlfriends in my address book. You know, they're emailing me back saying, hello, Stephen, surprised to hear from you. You know, thanks for the virus, again. Uh... <laughs> It's just so full, and part of you just goes, wow, how comedy should be, and then part of you goes, if there's a fire, most of us will die! <laughs> the people at the front get to see more comedy, more likely to die! Me, almost definitely going to die! Uh, this is fun, isn't it? Look, uh, so hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Stephen Grant, uh, it's good to be here, I'm from Brighton, and uh, this is always a short trek for me, it's quite nice, it almost feels like not going to London, so not even, don't even have to type in a London postcode, like KT2, there we go, already I know I'm in the suburbs, Mm, smell the money. Uh, but unfortunately, I had to put in the postcode because they sometimes put in just Kingston and then it sends me to anywhere in fucking Britain. You don't realise how many Kingstons there are. One day, I want my satin app to send me to Jamaica just to show me how fucking stupid I am. You know, what do you mean, Cornwall? Keep going, monkey boy. Thousands of miles yet. And, uh, and the best thing about it is, is of course, what it does is it sends you to the nearest bit and then it goes round it. And I love the little one way system you've got in Kingston. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, I get to the junction seeing the pub I need to fucking go to. And they're going, oh, no, no, <laughs> no, not for quite a fucking while yet, no, no. Go round it, go round it. What about this right turn here? Oh, do you look like a bus? You do not look like a bus. Fuck off, fuck off, down here, down here, down here. And then it tells me to take the last exit off the roundabout. Have you ever tried taking the last exit off the roundabout? Oh, fuck me, there's another. And uh, <laughs> just there for a while. <laughs> It's cool, it's cool, I'm here now, I'm, I'm in a good mood today, I have a lot going on. It's fun, funny actually, I live down um, in Brighton, like near the seafront, and one of my, uh, I've got a celebrity neighbour, well kind of, it's about four or five doors down, but it's, um, I live near the beach in Shoreham, and there's a, the, ne the next few houses are really posh, and they've got their own private beach, and uh, Heather Mills McCartney lives down there, and up until quite recently, there's been press outside the front door all the time, and all the other neighbours go, oh, it's such an intrusion, they, go, they love it, they love it, they fucking love it, like, you must come round for dinner, but mind out for the press outside, fuck me, we're nearly famous. And, um, they love it. and the bizarre thing about it is, is like she's been complaining about how much she's been put upon, you know. But what she's got to realise is she's divorcing someone that we're never, ever going to hate in this country, no matter what he is, no matter what he does, no matter what he becomes. Paul McCartney, he wrote some good songs, and for that reason alone, he can do whatever he fucking likes. That's the way it works in Britain, isn't it? Because, you know, to be fair, Paul's made some mistakes. He's the most recorded man in history, I don't know if you know this. He's recorded more music, more uh, records than anybody else ever. He's been most recorded. So on the basis of the fact that he made most of his money through it, he's also been the most uh, um, bloke who's been ripped off out of anybody in the world of music. So seeing as effectively he's lost most of his money to pirates, you think the least thing he would do is marry a woman with a wooden fucking leg. I mean, I... I can't help thinking that was full of fucking clues, you know. That's the thing, do you see her on GMTV going to go, oh, you don't realise, they stopped the tape there and then she went, ah, uh, <laughs> Patch 
crash fell down, the parrot landed, it was fucking That's why she's got a private beach, man, right? Because when she does actually finally get that money off St. Paul, she's going to bury it in the beach and make a very elaborate map, burn the edges slightly, and then fuck off to the Caribbean for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you my favourite little story before I bring on the final act, okay, because you guys are a really nice bunch of people. But I talked about the fact that I got heckled by the American. I've been heckled by a few times doing this sort of job. I kind of invite it when you compare, it's my job to soak up what people want to shout out. And, you know, it keeps it interesting for me. But I did, in the last year, hear the worst heckle of my life. And it wasn't even directed at me. It was directed at... What, sorry? I'm a Canadian. Oh, that would be your worst heckle. <laughs> what happens when you meet a Canadian? I'm fresh out of fucking insults. Um, <laughs> The joke about Canadians is not funny. She's got issues with it. Fuck it. The audience are heckling the audience now. Uh, technically, I didn't fuck off. Um, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, Hamish, that's not funny. Deal with that! <laughs> oh no, you might need 11 years on stage for his time. Um, what, sorry? It was Todger. Oh, it was somebody else, was it? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. When you start shouting, you sound like just one great big piss wanker, to be honest with you. It's difficult to differentiate. But he has a slight inflection in his power! Uh, wasn't able to kind of tick that box. Um, well done. Um, <laughs> You replying, are you, are you, are you pleased I passed your message on? I'm so pleased, yes. Yeah, I'm so pleased. I love that. As a Canadian, I'm I, I would never have guessed that you were a Canadian after that product. <laughs> I love it. Actually, my favourite ever bit of Canadian, because the Canadians are the Yanks, right? Take the piss out of each other at home, but tend to kind of group together elsewhere until people find out who the Yanks are. Then they start going, Canadian! 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 <laughs> My favourite story is about four years ago, right? Remember when New York had those blackouts? Was it? It was international news. Three days, no electricity, and when the power finally came back on, Mayor Giuliani at the time went on television to say that the reason why they had no power in New York is because Canada was connected to the grid and the Canadians had been losing.